Hey guys, welcome to Anamorphic Filmmaking Tutorial. My name is Tom Antos, and today I'm going to be using these two beautiful lenses I got from Zeroe. This is the 35mm and I got the 50mm here. They're both f1.8 and they're micro four thirds mount, which is why I'm using the packet 4K camera, even though I could be using, you know, pretty much any other camera. Like today we have the red on set, we've got a whole bunch of other HD cameras, but it's, I want the first thing I guess I want to stress out is, it's not always about the camera, it's uh, more, I would say, you know, optics and then what you actually do on set. So what, whatever is in front of the camera, things like lighting, composition, uh, you know, production design, things like that. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. Wow! So the script we're shooting today is actually uh, based on a film uh, that a friend of mine and a really talented filmmaker, Daniel Juan, did a few years ago. Now his version was done in Spanish, so we're gonna do kind of a, you could say an English remake, uh, plus we added a, a few little extra elements to it. Now the, the film isn't actually that complicated, uh, it's mainly we just have a girl here, played by Sarah Viteri, uh, and she's gonna be talking on the phone. Uh, and we're kind of starting pretty simple. I want actually the beginning shot to be pretty simple. Over the shoulder kind of seeing her uh, on the, with the phone. And as the camera moves in closer and we kind of reveal her face and we kind of reveal more of the, the setting, that's when I want the audience to kind of learn about her relationship. Now, of course, I don't want the whole thing to just be pure exposition. I don't want to learn about everything just through what she's saying on the phone. So we're also going to add uh, like little visual things, whether it's things like makeup, uh, things in the set, you know, stuff like that, that are hopefully going to, again, build on what she's saying and help the audience understand more of what her character is and kind of what she's going through. So there's always many, many different ways that you can shoot pretty much any scene in a script. So. Uh, that's where it, I, I would say very important to kind of before you start doing anything have make sure that the director and the cinematographer kind of you know are on the same page they, they're kind of have the same vision for the film uh, here in this case Ketak is actually going to be also operating the camera uh, Harry here is going to be assisting him uh, pulling focus that kind of stuff so when you guys are deciding on your angles and your composition it's I, I would say it's best to be prepared how prepared really is up to you uh, the way I like to do it is I, I usually do storyboards, uh, especially like for example on, on the shoot like today, which because we're using the anamorphic lenses and they have a 1.33 uh, squeeze aspect ratio, and also the camera we're using is a 16 by 9 image sensor, which means that the final image that we're going to end up with is a 2.4 to 1 uh, widescreen aspect ratio. So it's pretty wide, wider than your conventional 16 by 9. And because of that, it's easy to kind of end up with a lot of uh, empty space. Uh, but also, like if you're prepared, you can really use that extra horizontal space to your advantage. So like I said, the beginning shot is pretty simple. I have the girl over the shoulder kind of talking on the phone. And around her, I don't really want to show too much. Uh, then as we get kind of closer, we're going to start seeing little bruises she has. And, and then we see that she has blood on her hand, on, on her face. Uh, and then basically she, we, we kind of come around for an extreme close-up. At the end we see that she has a gun in her hand. And then we'll rock focus to behind her and we're gonna see uh, somebody dead. So we know that uh, she just murdered somebody. So uh, that's where we're kind of using again that extra horizontal space in, uh, in a kind of a more anamorphic widescreen aspect ratio is, is very critical and just knowing what to put there. So uh, looking at the storyboards, you can see there's a few different shots over the shoulder, close-ups and things like that. But uh, also looking at the location, uh, I think it, it just makes sense to actually do all of these in one long shot where the camera moves from a medium shot to a close-up and so on. Uh, and, and also by changing the angle of the camera. Now doing it as one long shot obviously means that once we get that shot, we're, we're done with the whole scene. But the initial setup can be a little bit more complicated and can take more time because the lighting usually is going to be a little bit harder to do to achieve so you know making sure that it works for all the different positions of the camera uh, but yeah i think that's going to be the best approach so uh, next step we can we can move on to is the actual camera movement check out part two where i talk about camera movement and how you can use it to add dimension and emotion to your films <laughs> <laughs> 